Those Sleepless Nights by Bixels. Nightmares were not unusual in the three and eight household. Well, three rarely had nightmares. There was nothing to really plague her mind, unless you count sitting through an hour of Captain's freestyle rap. Eight was well acquainted with sleep terrors, sleep paralysis, and other sleep-related disorders. Obviously, not the healthiest for the mind. It started with either Eight sneaking into Three's room and waking her up, or her screams doing the job instead. Three would stay with Eight and keep her company until sunrise. But eventually, the lack of sleep took its toll on the two agents. After Three fell asleep in the middle of a turf war battle, Eight was determined to tough it out. And so, their nightly routine came to a stop, much to Three's displeasure. It was half past three. Three woke with a parched throat and mindlessly slid out of bed, while her feet carried her down the hall and into the living room. Three hummed a little calamari incantation. She never admitted, the song often got itself stuck in her head. Her heart jolted when she found her couch, Eight's temporary bed, to be empty. I didn't know you could sing. You could probably give Kelly and Marie a run for their money. Came a laugh from the kitchen. Maybe you should sing me to sleep. <laughs> Green filled Three's cheeks, her pointed ears rising in temperature as she turned towards the voice to find her friend leaning against the countertop in the dark, nursing a mug. Nightmares again? Eight nodded. I think it's getting better, though. The kitchen light flickered on, and Three stepped forward to inspect her roommate. Eight's eyes dragged down with dark, heavy bags. I'm fine, Three. Really. Eight reassured. None of her words did much convincing. White noise broke the silence as water poured from the faucet and quickly filled the inkling's cup, only to be emptied in three mighty gulps. The little apartment was lit by the single kitchen light, a mellow yellow hue that washed over the solemn dark blue. From the windows and the glass balcony door, Inkopolis stretched high into the night, its twinkling yellows, blues, and reds dotting the view and drowning out the stars. Sounds of cars from the freeway mingled with the quiet hum of the refrigerator. Every now and then, a streak of light passed the skyline, crisscrossing through buildings as it carried night owls to their next destination. Anyone who cared enough to glance at the little apartment block on the west end of Inkopolis would find the only sign of life to be a small, lit window on the fourth floor, a faint heartbeat in a slumbering city. You know, the nightmares are scary. Obviously. It's always the subway. Always the green goo. Always that telephone. Eight bit her tongue at. And sometimes, you. But whenever I wake myself up and remember where I am, I'm reminded that I'm safe here in Angopolis with you. Ray took in Nate's words as if they were her dying breath, like always. She'd become quite the excellent listener. I guess that's why it's getting better. I'm constantly reminded how safe I am now. Three felt the overwhelming urge to give Ada a hug and hold her in her arms and tell her she'll make sure she'll never have to experience Kamabo again. But those words hung at the tip of her tongue like hooks, refusing to come tumbling out. Oh, what am I doing? I shouldn't be keeping you up. I need to go back to sleep. Eight snapped out of her ramblings. Well, so do you. I told you, I'm fine. Three officially lost her patience. Taking Eight's mug from her hands and setting it aside, she grabbed Eight's hand and pulled her away from the counter. Three? What are you doing? I said I- Don't try to argue, or else I'll change my mind. The two exited the kitchen, making sure to turn off the light crossed the living room, traversed the hallway, and entered Three's room, careful not to trip over any weapon parts. Was Three going to make her sleep on the floor? Eight wondered. No way. It's too messy and she hasn't cleaned out her room in ages, despite Eight's constant reminders. Three answered the question by climbing back into her bed and scooting over, making a little space next to her. She awkwardly tugged aside her blankets and patted that empty space. It took Eight a little too long to process what Three was implying. Gingerly, as if entering holy grounds, the octoling joined her partner in bed, 
Your obvious height difference didn't make things easier. Three, at first, attempted to hook an arm around eight and curl into her backside, only to find a face full of tentacles smothering her nose. After a moment of awkwardly shifting around, the two finally settled into something more comfortable. Eight's hand found itself tucked under her partner's arm, her knees fit under Three's like a lock and key, and a tender tentacle cling to Three's green dome. Three felt her soul leave her body. It's a miracle the two girls didn't up and spontaneously combust from the sheer amount of heat radiating off the two of them. Uh, are you, uh, comfy? Asked Three, her nervousness palpable in the cool night air. She wasn't expecting to be sharing her bed with a girl so soon, especially like this. Yeah, sputtered Eight, equally as anxious to be snuggled so tightly with her crush. Unfortunately, Three couldn't say the same for herself, with her arms awkwardly pressed against her sides to avoid touching her roommate any more than she already was. The heat refused to subside, warranting the bedsheet's banishment to their feet. Eight let out a sigh of content. So warm. So comfortable. She could even feel Three's heartbeat faintly jumping against her hand. Remember when I suggested you sing me to sleep? Don't push your luck, or else I'm pushing you out of bed. Eight smiled. Behind that grumpy attitude was a happy squid. It didn't take long for Eight to enter the deepest, most peaceful sleep she ever had. The End <laughs>